Okay, good morning everyone. This is our recorded audio discussion. How was your midterm exam? Is it easy, hard? Okay, so for today, for lecture 19, we're gonna talk about um, the life of Rizal as an exile. Then after that, he am um, from the Pitan to Manila, then Manila to Fort Santiago, his trial, and then last 24 hours, and then his death. After his death, they're gonna talk about the retraction of Rizal or the supposed retraction of Rizal on whatever he written, whatever he said against the church. So we're gonna end the life of Rizal na. And we're gonna know Rizal as a martyr na dayon. So um, with, the last, with the last discussion, uh, we talked about the second homecoming of Rizal. Na kaya siya umuwi dito sa Pilipinas dahil sa plano niyang mag-build ng Filipino area where the Filipino refugees or like yung mga gustong tumakas sa mga pangyayari and situation and events here in the Philippines can go to. So, di ba, from Hong Kong, have gone to Malaysia kasi may plano siya again na gumawa ng isang colony, Filipino colony in Sabah. But, he need to confer or talk Personally, with this poll, the Governor General of the Philippines, he must ask for permission. Kaya, napilitan siya umuwi dito sa Pilipinas. But what happened was, nung pauwi pa lang siya, kasama ang kapatid niyang si Lucia, Lucia Rizal, the one who had his husband who died because of cholera during nung pinaalis sila sa Kalamba. So, Yes, um, while pa sila, Rizal was set in trap pala. Um, from Hong Kong, my message na palang ipinadala kay Dispohol na Sir Rizal is sakay sa itong barko na ito. And then, while aboard the ship from Hong Kong, may ipinasa na pala na kaso against kay Rizal here in the Philippines. So, when he came into the Philippines, then this Pohol arrested Rizal during his interview. And then this Pohol showed him anti friar leaflets entitled the Pobles um, Prailes or Poor Friars, allegedly discovered. In his sister's, um, his, his sister Lucia's pillow cases, but it is said na planted lang daw yun. It is set as a um, trap talaga for Rizal na wala na siyang kawala. When papunta siya dito sa Philippines, darating siya dito as someone na ripe for imprisonment. So, yes, because of the pobres frailes na nakuha sa um, pillowcase or sa unan ni Lucia then Rizal was arrested and he was imprisoned in Fort Santiago for almost 10 days then Rizal was brought at 12.30am on July 14 to the streamer Cebu not the place Cebu but a streamer, a ship Passing through Mindoro on Panay, the vessel docked at the Pitan in Zamboanga del Norte on the evening of July 17th. And then, true, the Pitan is a scenic place with fine beach beaches, perhaps suiting place for a bleak bayan like Rizal. But Jose was not there to become a tourist or a vacationer. He was an exile there. It was, it became the extended na prison for Rizal. So, the ship, Captain Delgas landed him over to the handed him, him over to the local Spanish commandant, Ricardo Carnicero. Yes, and that signaled the start of Rizal's life as a deportee in the Pitan. Okay, so 
Ricardo Carnicero became, yes, became good friends with Rizal. Um, the first reason that Carnicero became friends with Rizal was to make Dao Rizal as comfortable as possible. I don't know why, baka may hidden agenda, but still, they became good friends. But actually, Carnicero is um, Rizal's guard. Siya yung naging parang, ang tawag ito, tagabantay <laughs> sa prison Rizal, which is now the Pitan. Later, in his life in the Pitan, Rizal wrote a poem, a Don Ricardo Carnicero. It is a poem written honoring the kind commandant of the occasion of his birthday in August 26, 1892. So, in September 1892, Rizal Carnicero won a lottery na lottery. Mupatad po siya, guys. So, um, the Manila Lottery Ticket, number 9736, jointly owned by Rizal and Carnicero and a Spanish resident of Dipolog, won the second prize of 20,000 pesos. Then Rizal used some part of his share, 6,200, in procuring a parcel of land near the coast of Talisay, a barrio near the Pitan. So, etong parcel of land, ito na yung tinayuan niya sa naging school niya, sa naging clinic niya, sa naging garden niya, sa naging bahay niya. So, um, personally owned talaga with title sa lupa yung andun sa Rizal Shrine in the Pitan. Sino nakapunta Rizal Shrine? The last field trip of the Jack, five, uh, Jack 9 people was in the Pitan. And, uh, and then, yeah, supposedly, um, we are planning to have another field trip for the first sem and the second sem but we can't do that anymore because of the covid but still let's just imagine and i know that some of you already had visited the the pitan shrine the result shrine in the pitan so again that land was bought with the money and uh na panaluna ni Rizal in the lottery na sinalihan Ni Rizal Carnicero and a Spanish resident in Dipalog. So, yes, on a property of more than 10 hectares, or diba, ang laki laki na ng um, parcel of land, piece of land na nabili ni Rizal with the part of the 6,200 na napanalunan niya. So, he lived in the house which was square in shape, another house which was hexagonal was the barn where Rizal kept his chickens. In his octagonal house lived some of his pupils for Rizal also established a school teaching young boys practical subjects like reading, writing, arithmetic, geography, and Spanish and also English languages. So later he constructed additional hats to accommodate his recovering out of town patients. Also, the, his visitors, his visitor, uh, visitors, his family and even the spies which was sent by different people to go to Rizal and to convince him in different things so we're gonna talk about that more but okay daily life of Rizal as an exile so it is like some of the vlogs na um let's see um Jamil's life for the day <laughs> let's he, that dito, so we're gonna look re at Rizal's life for 24 hours in a, in a day. Ano ba mga uh, pinagagawa ni Rizal? So, Rizal practiced medicine, taught some pupils, and engaged in farming and horticulture. He grew many fruits like coconut, mango, lansones, makopa, santol, mangustin, jackfruit, riabanos, baluno, and nanka. So, Rizal really is, has a green thumb and busy kay mong lolo girl. Ang daming niyang hobbies, no? Ang daming time. And uh, he also domesticated animals like rabbits, dogs, cats, and chickens. And the school he founded in 1893 started with only three pupils and had about more than 20 students at that time his exile ended. Okay, so from three to 20 students, so... Lumagudin new school ni Rizal. Okay, Rizal would rise at 5 in the morning to see his plants, fed his animals, and prepare breakfast. Sana all 5 a.m. 5 a.m. naghagok po man akong 
Nagagok pa ko, Ana. But yes, having taken his morning meal, he would treat the patients who had come to his house, paddling his boat called Baroto. He had two of them. Sana all, duha ihang Baroto. He would then proceed to the Pitan town to attend to his other patients there the whole morning. So, Rizal would return to Talisay in his land or his home to take his lunch. Teaching his pupils would begin at around about 2 p.m. and would end at 4 or 5 in the afternoon. With the help of his pupils, Rizal would spend the rest of the afternoon farming, planting trees, watering the plants, and pruning the fruits. Rizal then would spend the night reading and writing. So that's the end of the day in Rizal. Morning, that's um, mukaon, luto, and then um, taking care of his plants and animals, then um, treating his pet patients both na pumunta doon personally sa kanya and then on the pita na town after that that's lunch and then again as I said um, students niya and after that evening then writing and reading so then Rizal and the Jesuits as Rizal is in exile or while he's living in the pitan the Jesuits or the priests labaw na sa mga here assigned in the Pitan. They kept coming to Rizal and tried to make Rizal side with them. Or like, gusto nilang exchange yung idea ni Rizal kung ano ang simbahan. It is like saying na gusto nilang um, tumaliwas si Rizal sa mga isinulat niya sa No Limitang Hiri and El Filibusterismo. It is like saying na personally, some of the priests will go to his home or his clinic and then ask him if gusto ba niyang magpupisal. But, yes, there are several attempts by the priests to send someone and recruit Rizal or change the mind of Rizal. So, here, Rizal and the Jesuits. The first attempt by the Jesuit friars to win back the deported Rizal to the Catholic fold was the offer for him to live in the Pitan convent under the same conditions. So, when he came to Rizal, to the Pitan, before Rizal won the, the lottery with Carnicero, the priests, um, inalok nila si Rizal na, you must live with us in the convent and have a more comfortable life, na hindi ka mag... You will not have a problem with um, what you will eat, what you will plant, kano yung um, gagawin mo. We will provide everything for you. But, ayun, my but, my but, wala nang libreng pagkain at wala nang libreng tirahan ngayon. My but talaga yan. And my expected na, na return. So, result refused. Refused. Rizal did not stay with the parish priest Antonio Obak in the church convent. Just a month, month after Rizal was deported to the Pitan, the Jesuit order assigned to the Pitan, the priest Francisco de Paula Ch Sanchez, Rizal's favorite teacher in Ateneo. Remember when Rizal was um, studying in Manila, he described some of the teachers and then one of that was Francisco de Paula Sanchez, which Rizal said na yun siya yung favorite teacher niya and then you know grabe naka desperado ang mga priest they uh, they got someone that Rizal know and has a weight sa life ni Rizal so they got Francisco de Paula Sanchez to try and convince Rizal but, though Rizal appreciated his mentor's effort, he could not be convinced to change his mind. Nevertheless, their differences in belief did not get in the way of their good friendship. So, even though na kaya pumunta si Di Paula Sanchez or kaya siya na-assign sa Depitan dahil kay Rizal, then Rizal saying no to whatever yung plano nila. It, they, become, they become friends still. They have talked about um, so many social th um, problems, social things, or like yung mga 
marami silang pinag-usapan, marami silang pinag-discussan, mayroong mga debates on whatever theories and ideologies between them. So, yes, they still um, are good friends. Okay. The priest, then, after that, it's the second attempt na, di ba? First, yung gustong um, gusto nilang tumira si Rizal doon sa church. And then, the second was bringing Francisco de Paula Sanchez. And then, pangatlo, the priest Pablo Pastel, superior of the Jesuit Society in the Philippines, also made some attempts by correspondents to win over the Catholicism the exiled physician. Four times they exchanged letters from September 1892 to April 1893. Okay. And then the debate was none less than scholarly and it manifested Rizal's knowledge of the Holy Scriptures for he quoted verses from it. The Rizal was consistently attended Mass in the Pitan. He refused to espouse the conventional type of Catholicism. So, here also, diba, the fact that Rizal is against the priest and the church, but not he, but he is not against the Bible and he is not against Christ. But still, he is godly. So, yes, that is the attempts of the Jesuits to win over Rizal to their side. So, after that, let's go with achievements ni Rizal in the Pitan. Rizal provided significant community services in the Pitan, like improving the town's drainage and constructing better water system. Why, what do you mean by drainage? Kanabi taong sa kanal, kung saan papunta yung mga tubig ulan, yung mga excess water. So that's the drainage system. And then he also constructed better water system using empty bottles and bamboo joints. Um, remember, sa mga nakap or sa mga nakapuntang the Pitan Shrine, Rizal Shrine in the Pitan, um, Rizal made his own water reservoir para sa kanyang place in his piece of land. He don't need to go somewhere and get water because he has his own reservoir. Sana all! And the, this is one of his biggest legacies and mga naibigay niya sa mga tao in the Pitan. It is also said na Rizal is one of the people who started to modernize the Pitan. And it is also said throughout history that Rizal is the reason why the Pitan is known in books. Kasi ba diba pag sinasabing the Pitan, Rizal. Rizal the Pitan. So, yes. Okay. So, he also taught the town folks about health and sanitation so as to avoid the spread of diseases. So, gituluan niya gligo, sabon, and whatever man ang yung nakita niya sa labas ng Pilipinas, he spread the idea. And then, the culture na para sa kanya is a good thing na i-adapt ng mga Pilipinos. So, with his Jesuit priest friend Sanchez, Rizal made a huge uh, relief map of Mindanao in the Pitan Plaza that is said to be the first Dao na relief map of whole Mindanao. Again, it is in front of a church, the biggest church in the Pitan, in their plaza. Again, sa mga nakapuntang the Pitan, di ba, ginatumban-tumban ra na siya. But yes, it is important in history Dao because again, it is the first huge relief map of Mindanao. Also, he bettered their forest by providing evident trails, stairs, and some benches. Sana all. Again, why do I always keep using the word sana all? But yes, he made um, ways yung agian and trail tracks. Not trail tracks, but like trail kung saan ka pwedeng mag-walk, take a walk, and uh, explore the environment and the uh, rich and healthy na forests of the Pitan. And then he also put some benches, no? So, pwede na. Pwede na safe na. And then it is more beautiful na daw na magstay in the parks and forests of the Pitan because of Rizal. He started now to beautify the city. Also, he invented a wooden machine for mass production of bricks. Yes, bricks. 
Diba? Using the bricks, he produced result built a water dam for the community with the help of his students. Yes, water dam, diba? As the town's doctor Rizal equally treated all pa patients regardless of their economic and social status. He accepted as, um, as fees things like poultry, poultry meaning manok or itlog or patoba or ostrich. Oh. My ostrich in the pitan. And then outside from poultry, he also accepted crops and at times even gave his services to poor fox for free. Also, his specialization was ophthalmology, meaning again the field which is which is specialized para sa mata. And then he also offered treat treatments to almost all kinds of diseases like fever, sprain, broken bones, typhoid, and Hernia. Hernia is what you call this loose loss or like um, it is famous more sa mga lalaki um, mas greater on the ones who do sports, especially basketball. Yung parang lumalaki yung um, scrotum because of I don't know, stress. But Yes, that's hernia. Na kaya nga nag-wear ng supporter yung mga lalaki. But so much for that. Ma'am, yan lang ba yung mga natitreat ni Rizal? Akala ko pa doctor siya. For your information guys, this is not the same as our time na pag sinabing may masakit ulo mo, pag sinabing masakit ngipin mo, masakit yung, um, yung katawan mo, yung, then or parang may, may lagnat ka, May sinat, may ubo, may sipon. Oh, inom ka lang ng tablet, diba? Inom ka lang ng biogesic, ng paracetamol. Walang ganyan before. So, they need um, doctor for everything. And then, syempre, mahal si doctor. So, hindi talaga well, um, ang tawag nito, well provided yung health services sa, sa um, before. So, kaya, again, um, Rizal, walang keme-keme, walang uh, sinasabi si Rizal na, ah, don't come to my clinic because masakit lang yung ulo mo, may lagnat ka lang. But he treated everyone equally and regardless of diseases. So, fever, sprain, broken, bro bo broken bones, typhoid, and hernia. Okay. Next, um, Rizal also helped in the livelihood of the abaca farmers in the Pitan. By trading their crops in Manila, he also gave them lessons in abaca weaving to provide, to produce hammocks. Hammocks meaning duyan, kana mga social bitaw na duyan sa kana mga beach, uh, that's hammock. Okay, but technically hammock is just duyan. Noticing that the fishing method of the locals was inefficient, hmm, he taught them better techniques like weaving and using better fishing nets. Diba? Sa pinag-usapan natin, ang dami na ni Rizal, no? Ang dami na naging um, role ni Rizal in the Pitan. Naging engineer na siya. Diba? Towns drainage and construction of um, water system and then yung sa dam. Diba? And then, naging cartographer pa siya. Cartographer meaning yung gumagawa ng maps, nagdo-draw nag ng maps, di ba? And then, eto pa, naging agriculturist pa siya, di ba? Nagtatanim, nag, um, tinuturuan niya yung mga taga-depita ng better na farming methods, and then, ayun, yung naging, anong tawag nito? Naging someone pa siya na nag-beautify sa city nila. Nag-decorate pa siya, di ba? Tapos, eto pa, naging doctor pa siya. Tapos, ophthalmologist, di ba? Yung sa mata, not just sa mata, but sa lahat ng sakit. And then, after that, abaka weaving pa, di ba? Naging parang teacher pa siya in the business sector, di ba? And then, ano pa? And naging fisherman pa siya. And after that, that's not enough for Rizal. He also became a scientist and philologist. Oh, aside from doing archaeological ex excavations, what do you mean by archaeological excavations? Yung mga digs bitaw or yung parang, what's this in Visaya? Naga, naga bungkal. Visaya to si bungkal. Oh. Naga kalut siya o ka ng mga 
possible na na ay mga nakalubong na important artifacts from the past. So, that's what you call archaeological excavations. So, also Rizal inspected the Pitan's rich flora and fauna. Flora meaning the plants, fauna meaning the animal kingdom or the animal na environment or the animal na life in the Pitan. Providing sort of taxonomy to numerous kinds of forests and sea creatures. So, he explored the Pitan, not just the beaches and the tourist spots, the plaza, the church, no, not just that, but also the forest. He, he found um, yung mga reasons why tinatawag na rich in natural resources and the Pitan. So, from his laboratory and the herbar herbarium, so it is just yung laboratory niya and yung kung nasaan lahat ng herbs, kung nasaan lahat ng plants na nakita niya, yung mga discover niya. So, there, di ba? Imagine na scientist, archaeologist, nahimo pag yun siyang zoologist, biologist, di ba? He sent various biological specimens to scientists in Europe, like his dear friend Dr. Adolf Mayer in Dresden. Remember, Dr. Adolf Mayer. Okay. In return, the European scholars sent him books and other academic reading materials, and that from the collections he sent to the European scholars, at least three species were named after him. Ano ang gigandan nun para ay um, based sa iyaha ma'am kasi it is said na out of all the species na gisent niya, three is yung siya ang nakadiscover o oh, diba first is the dapitan frog named Rakupurus rizali next a, a type of beetle a pogonia rizali and a flying dragon draco rizali o oh. Eba. So that's the three species, a uh, species now where uh, which Rizal is the one who have discovered Tao. Okay, so after that also, having learned the Visayan language, he also engaged himself in the study of language, culture, and literature. Or di ba? Kabig academically inclined. Kung kita pa ni, kita na tungo tapitan. Sigur ang guro tay kaligug dagat. No, kita siguro tong first na nag selfie and nag tiktok dito sa dakak ko but yes but Rizal um, made use daw sa yahang time but dili para sa ato ana if kita ang nasa yahang side we'll just relax and enjoy and be idle but Rizal is not someone ayun nga na kanang kaya daw na walang gawin so here in the pitan Rizal that became very productive daw so, next, he examined the local folklores, meaning the stories, and then customs, Tagalog grammar, and the Malay language, the language which is na-adapt natin, di ba, from Malaysia. Okay, that's, um, okay, the Malaysian group of languages is, is called the Malay language. His intellectual products about the subjects he related to some European academicians like Dr. Reynold Rost, uh, Rost his close philologist friend in London oh, here after that diba <coughs> I talk about the life na niya the Jesuits and then kung ano yung mga achievements niya nagawa niya for the pita that is the spice and the secret emissary here hindi lang yung mga tagasimbahan yung nag-try na makuha yung loob ni Rizal but other people also so not just once did Rizal learn that his enemies sent spies to gather incriminating proofs that Rizal was a separatist and an insurgent what do you mean by separatist he is a um, he is someone which is against the Spanish colonial government okay next um Perhaps disturbed by his conscience, a physician named Matias Arrieta, it is the first spy which came to the Pitan to, ayun nga, 
just like um, what I said a while ago, um, spice and emissaries were was sent to look for things na makadaot sa ngalan ni Rizal. Um, the first one being Matias Areta, but later na guilty again. Matias Areta revealed his covert mission and young mission and asked for forgiveness after he was cured by Rizal because ato manggo daw na time is nagdaot si Matias Areta and Bahalag na kay Balunan si Rizal na bad iyahang intentions in coming to the Pitan Rizal still did not um, turn him away but gitabangan pa siya. So, okay. Next is uh, March 1895. A man introduced himself as Pablo Mercado here claiming to be Rizal's relative but yun pala this stranger is another na pod na emissary. The stranger eagerly volunteered to bring Rizal's letters to certain persons in Manila. Made suspicious by the visitor's insistence, Rizal interrogated him, and it turned out that his real name was Florencio Nanaman of Cagayan de Misamis, hmm? paid as a secret agent by the Recollect Friars. Ayun na naman. Pinadala si Florencio Nanaman under the alias of Pablo Mercado to look for things na makadaot sa ngalan ni Rizal. So after that, Mm. Next is Dr. Pio Valenzuela here. So, kung ang last two was from the enemies of Rizal, Pio Valenzuela was sent to the Pitan by Andres Bonifacio, the of that time the current leader of the Katipunan, who believed that carrying out revolt had to be sanctioned first by Rizal. So, ayun nga na ipinadala si Pio Valenzuela by Bonifacio to ask for the per permission or the the bus bus ni Rizal with the plan nila na to start a war, an active war, hindi lang propaganda movement, hindi lang la solidaridad hindi lang paper, paper and writing, writing of essay and all, but talagang war so, yun yung mission ni Pio Valenzuela in coming to the Pitan. And did you know that Pio Valenzuela is the tawag nito, treasure of taga tago ng yaman ng Katipunan. So, um, he is one of the biggest um, officials of Katipunan and he personally have gone to the Pitan to ask for the support of Rizal. But, eto, my e, eh, my but, but Rizal politely refused to approve the uprising. Here, ha? But Rizal politely refused to approve the uprising, suggesting that the peaceful means was far better than violent ways in obtaining freedom. Rizal further believed that a revolution would be unsuccessful without arms and monetary support from wealthy Filipinos. So then, he thus recommended that if the Katipunan was to start a revolution, it had to ask for the support of the rich and educated Filipinos. So, hindi sinuportahan ni Rizal yung sinasabi nilang Pio and then ni Bonifacio of an active war. He said that before sila mo go with their whatever they want to do, they need to have the support of the Filipino middle class, yung mga may pera. Kasi yun yung pera is the um, yun daw yung magpapanalo or it will give the Filipinos a chance to win. And also, as you can remember, diba, I also I already said na Rizal is not someone na gusto ng freedom, na gusto ma-separate tayo with the, Sp the Spanish kingdom. He wants us to be part of the Spanish territory. He wants us to be a province again, diba? Um, he wants na the Filipinos will experience the same rights, privileges, and uh, be under the same government with the Spanish people. So, yun talaga yung plano nila, diba? That's the, one of the five main goals baya, of the propaganda movement. Diba? Okay. So, after the emissaries or after the spies, after the emissary, oh, 
before I forgot, emissary is someone sent with a mission sa lahik na lugar to lahik na tao. So, muro siya, yeah, someone nagisugo with a specific mission. That's an emissary. So, after the emissaries, ayan nga, i-visit po siya sa iya mga loved ones. So, here, Rizal was in the pitan when he learned that his true love, Lino Rivera, had died. Remember, Lino Rivera, kanang, when Rizal was is, uh, was in his second travel abroad, nalaman niya na nakipag, um, na ipakasal na si Lino Rivera to a rich na Spanish mestizo. So, that was a cause of a heartbreak ni Rizal, di ba? Before siya nag-second coming, second homecoming. And then, eto, while in the pitan, he have heard na namatay na yung true love niya. Ouch. But, okay. But, uh, he was consoled by the visit of his mother and some of his sisters. On August 1893, Doña Chudora, along with um, Ixone Rizal Trinidad, joined Rizal in the pit and resided with him in Casa Cuadrada, meaning the square house where um, which Rizal had um, taken to himself to be his private quarters. So, yes, the son successfully operated in his mother's um, cataract. It is a parang follow-up na operation sa, ma sa mata ng kanyang ina. So, next, um, at distinct times, Jose's sisters Maria and Narcisa also visited him. So, tatlo na yung nakavisit sa kanya. Tatlong kapatid na niya. So, three of Jose's nephews also went to the Pitan and had their early education under their uncle. Okay. That's Maria San Mauricio, Lucia San Strudoro, and Stanislao. Okay. Also, um, Jose's um, niece Angelica, that's an um, Narcissa's daughter. Oh, di ba? Manjay na sa tanan niyang pag-umang kun. Si Angelica rin ayos ang galan. Ow. <laughs> okay. Also had experience living for some time with her exiled uncle in Mindanao. So outside siya mama na itulok ka igsoon and outside siya mga igsoon na iyang upat ka pag-umang kun. Isa ka labay o tulok ka lalaki. So, in 1895, Doña Sudora left the Pitan for Manila to be with Don Francisco, who was getting weaker. Oh, that's the bani. And to sila, 1893, that's two years, two years after 1895, nilakaw si Doña Sudora. Okay, shortly after his mother left, Josephine Bracken came to possess life. Josephine was an orphan with Irish blood and the stepdaughter of who's this patient from Hong Kong. Actually, um, Josephine Bracken came to the Pitan. Cubanan lang niya ang iyahang si tawag ani adopted at adopted or like kanabitaw nag-adopt sa iyaha na si saan na yung naman to the but yes. Okay. So, Rizal and Bracken met and there started their love story. Na pod, babae na pod. Okay, so Rizal and Bracken were unable to obtain a church wedding because Jose would not retract his anti-Catholic views. So, wala ni sugot si church na magpakasal sila. So, kailaman mo ni Rizal. So, Rizal and Josephine Bracken has a parang personal, intimate na ceremony with themselves. Na sila ang na, nagpakasal sa ilahang kaugalingon. Mura na mga good job. Mura na siyang nagawas na nagpromise sila sa ilahang life para sa usat-usa. Sa dakong bato ilalom sa bituon. Ah, atubangan sa dagat. Sa isa kagabhiun. Ah, yes. Again, sa so itong mga nakatugdapitan, diba, gina-share man na sa mga tour guides na katong heart shape daw na dakong bato dito sa dapit sa pan sa man-made pan sa man-made pan na diba sa result dito daw sila ni Patong o dito sila nagkasal-kasal but yes hinandilas to 
Josephine as his common law wife who kept him company and kept house for him. Before the year ended in 1895, the couple had a child who was born prematurely. The son, uh, who was named after Rizal's father, Francisco, died a few hours after birth. For detailed discussion, yes, um, at kasi yung story daw. Gipakuratan daw niya si Josephine. Si Josephine na ligyas, nakuhaan, na, or nakaanak o gahat da yun. Um, premature ang bata, namatay after pila ka oras. So, ayun na. Okay, so wala joy anak si Rizal o si Josephine Bracken ha. Dili, dapat dili na siya makakos o confusion sa inyo ha. Josephine Bracken after na kung nakabasa mo sa inyong lecture notes sa lecture 17, you will read na Josephine Bracken after the death of Rizal was married to another man and nagkaanak siya sa kato na lalaki dili kay Rizal. So, after that 1895 that's goodbye the pita na dayon meaning si Rizal ni hawag the pita and let's see anong reason so in 1895 Blumentritt informed Rizal that the revolution um, is happening in Cuba so because of the revolution na pag yellow fever epidemic no meaning na pag sakit outside from the revolution na problema in Cuba or uh, the fight for independence sa mga Cubans na pag sakit na ming laganap sa ilaha. So, they have this really, really urgent need of doctors. So, Rizal, after receiving the letter or the information from Blumentritt, decided to go to Cuba and volunteer to provide medical services that to receiving no reply from Blanco. Blanco is the current na Governor General during 1980-1895. So, dito siya dapat mga yobayaog ka ng, si tawag, ani? Um, permission to go to Cuba. So, receiving no reply from Blanco, Rizal lost interest in his request. But on July 30, 1896, that's um, for almost a year, if I'm not mistaken. So, Rizal received the letter from the Governor General sanctioning, sanctioning his petition to serve as a volunteer in Cuba. So, gisugta na siya. So, Rizal made immediate preparations to live, selling and giving as souvenirs to friends and students his various properties and accumulate niya in his stay in the Pitan. So, in the late afternoon of July 31, Rizal got on the ship Espana with Josephine, Narcisa, Anis, three nephews, and three of his students made a fit and fox. Especially Rizal students came to see their beloved doctor for the last time. Cordially bidding him goodbye, they shouted, Adios, Dr. Rizal. And some of his students even cried, Diba, the tearful goodbye. With sorrowing heart, he waved his hand in farewell and he said, Adios, the pitan. Okay, so the steamer departed for Manila at midnight of July 31, 1896. With tears in his eyes, Rizal later wrote in his diary on board the ship, I have been in that district four years, 13 days, and a few hours. Remember that again, ha? Huh? That's four years, 13 days, and a few hours. 1892 until 1896. So... That's the life of Rizal in the Pitan. So, we'll go to the Pitan. And, nga nung naabot siya o bagumbayan. Diba? Kasi yung, bak- yung reason bakit siya umalis in the Pitan is to help in Cuba. Diba? Remember, yes, pag ulanggit ka, ayo, diba? To serve as a volunteer position in Cuba. So, umalis siya ng the Pitan. And then, here is what happened. Bakit napunta siyang bagong bayan? Bakit napunta siya doon at naging someone na uh, subject to firing squad? Okay. So, leaving the Pitan for Manila on July 31, 1896, aboard the steamer Spania, with result as a passenger made some stopovers in various areas. Dumaguete. So, before siya naabot o Manila, Ito pa siya, nihapit pa ang hanggisakyan sa Dumaguete. He visited some friends, former classmates in Madrid, and then cured a sick Guardia Civil 
Then in Cebu, nihapit din sila og Cebu. So, from Dumaguete to Cebu. And then, ayun nga, operations, prescriptions, and then meeting other na patients pa. And after Cebu, Iloilo, where he saw the historical Mactan Island. And then, from Iloilo, he went shopping and was impressed by the Molo Church in Iloilo, still in Iloilo. And the shop sailed to Capiz, to Rumblon, and then to Manila. Oh, ay diba? Laagan should kay mo ang lolo girl. Okay, diba? Paingo na lang man gani siya o Manila. Dagan, pagkid ka siya, gihapitan. Okay, so in Manila, it is said that in Manila, um, there was an attempt by the Katipuneros to help Rizal escape. But, Rizal accordingly refused to be rescued. The Katipunero, Emilio Jacinto, Emilio Jacinto himself, disguising him as a ship crew member, was supposed to have managed to get close to Rizal. While another Katipunan member, Guillermo Masangkay, circled the ship in a boat. But, Fermin is aimed to fulfill his mission in Cuba, Rizal accordingly refused to be rescued. Here, ako personally, is really, really, really confused and irritated. Irritated yun yung word na ginamit, no? With the decision of Rizal here. Because, can you imagine during this time, this is the time where the Filipino KKK is in the process of fighting for their lives. Ito yung time na they are um, punitin ang sedula. Ayun. Cry of Pugadlawin. Yung nagtago-tago na silang Aguinaldo, silang Bonifacio. Yung KKK is para dili lang madakpan kay nangadto sa bukid sa Balintawak. And then having secret meetings. KKK Oh, here ha, again. KKK is fighting for their lives to fight for freedom and independence of the Philippines. And here comes Rizal. Diba? Nag-shopping. Nag-laag. And then, imbis na mutabang sa independence movement, mulakaw siya sa Pilipinas para mutabang sa Cuba. I am really confused by what Rizal is thinking during this time. And what do you think, guys? <laughs> no? Bakit kaya? Diba? Pinuntahan na siya ni Pio Valenzuela in Dapitan to ask for his permission. And then he said no. And after that, he said na, you ask for the uh, the support of the Filipino middle class. And here, after saying na, sige, pa, la, laban lang yun mo. Diba? It is like saying that. Naging na na niyang kikiki na, sige, laban lang yun mo. And then, eto pa, karo na po. Itakas ka na mo. Ay, pasagdira ko ninyo dari. Laban lang yun mo. It's really weird. And then, we are looking at Rizal as our hero. Our national hero. Still, ato para siyang tuklasun. Kita na na ninyo pa. Nga no, nga na. So, so much for that. So, there in Manila, Emilio Jacinto and Guillermo Masangkay tried. That's Masangkay, ha? That's not Masangkay. That's Masangkay. Sorry for the typo. And, okay. Rizal arrived in Manila on August 6, 1896. And a day after, the mail boat Isla Panay had left for Spain. So, di ba tungkol siyang kalaagan? Wala siya kaabot sa Isla de Luzon na supposedly mo yung sakyan pa sa Spain and then from Spain to Cuba. So, he had to stay in Manila until the next steamer arrived. Afraid that his one-month stay on board the ship might bring him troubles, he requested the Governor General that he Rizal be isolated from everyone except his family. So, the government reacted by transferring him near midnight of the same day to a cruiser, Castilla Duck Inn. Cavite. An okay, ma'am. Kasi lang, ma'am. Malaw kasabot. Here, August 6, naabot si Rizal sa Manila. 
Pag-abot niya dito, pero pag-abot niya dito, wala na ang supposedly sa akin niya paingon sa Europe, nakalakaw na. So, what happened was, Rizal need to wait for the next steamer na paingon o Spain. So, kinahangan siya maghulap o another month, monthly ang ilahang kung ano, si tawag ani, kanang um, travel or monthly ang kanang schedule bitaw si lahang barko. So, result is afraid na na ay mga mahitabo sa iyaha. So, kinang gusto siya magpa-isolate. So, that is the reason why it was transferred to a cruiser, Castilla, in Cavite. Okay, on August 19, the Katipunan plot to revolt against the Spanish authorities was discovered through the confession of a certain Teodoro Patino. This is the time where the KKK was kanang gi, si tawag ani, gi traidor sila by Chudoro Patino. Patino, kay iyahang gikumpisal ang mga plano sa KKK kay Mariano Hill. So, tungod ato, na pagkumpisal niya sa pari, ang pari ni Tungan sa government. So, ang government, nahibala ng tanan. This discovery led to the arrest of many katipuneros. The katipunan led by the Bonifacio reacted by conveying many of its mem conve convening, meaning gi gitapok many of its members and deciding to immediately begin the armed revolt as a sign of their commitment to the revolution they tore their sadulas yes there na da yun oh diba katipunan's first major assault happened on august 30 when the katipuneros attacked 100 spanish soldiers protecting the powder magazine in san juan okay because spanish informants arrived 150 katipuneros were killed and more than 200 were taken prisoners. So, this blood encounter in San Juan and uprisings in other suburban Manila areas on the same day prompted the government general to proclaim a state of war in Manila and other seven nearby provinces. But while this is happening, Rizal, mm, the same day, Rizal Blanco issued letters of recommendation on Rizal's behalf to Spanish Minister of War and Minister of Colonies with a cover letter clearing Rizal of any connection with the raging revolution. And on September 2, he was transported to the ship Isla de Panay and then going to Spain. So again, diba, can you imagine? Fighting for their lives na si KKK. Still, si Rizal Mura na siya nahugas siyang kamot, no? With letter of recommendation na paad doon siya sa Cuba and then nilakaw siya. Ato siya Spain. It's really, really, really confusing. Still, bright yun daw si Rizal. Di takasabot siya po hunahuna. But still, okay. Going to Spain, the steamer Ista de Panay left um, Manila for Barcelona the next day. Arriving in Singapore on September 7. Okay. Paspas na po ba ya? Ay, September 2 siya ni Hawang Manila. Nabot siya space September 7. Rizal was urged by some Filipinos like his co-passenger Don Fe Pedro Rojas and Singaporean resident Don Manuel Camus to stay. Mm -hmm. On a British-controlled territory. But, Diba, gigla na siya na diri na lang. Ayun, nagkuhan na to. Kay British man ang control diri. Na, na lugar sa Singapore. So, safe ka diri. But still, nag-trust man siya sa word ni Blanco, Governor General, ha? During the, the, this time, Rizal refused to stay in Singapore. And, but, without his knowledge, the I, Blanco and the ministers of war and the colonies had been exchanging telegrams, planning his arrest upon reaching Barcelona. So there, as is the Panay made a stopover at Port Said, Egypt, on September 27. The passengers had known that the uprising in the Philippines had got had worsened, as thousands of Spanish soldiers were dispatched to Manila, and many Filipinos were either killed in a battle or arrested and executed. Rizal had a feeling that he had already been associated with the Filipino Revolution as his co-passengers became. A love to him. A love meaning wala na siya no? A day after, he wrote a letter to Blumentritt informing him that he, Rizal, received an information that Blanco had ordered to arrest him. So, may sumubong na siya sa best friend, no? 
Before reaching Malta on September 30, he was officially ordered to stay in his cabin until further orders from Blanco to come. Ay, yeah. Pag-abot niya, naabot lagi siya o Europe, pero wala na siya actually siya nakadaog, ay nakanaog. Because hmm, he became a prisoner on board the Isla de Panay ang court at Barcelona on October 3, 1896. He was placed under heavy guard by the by then military commander of Barcelona, General Eulogio Dispujol. Remember Dispujol? The same former governor general who deported Rizal in the Pitan. Remember this poll? The ones who convened with the Hong Kong na consul? The rat is in the trap. And then pag abot sa Manila ni Rizal, um, the pobre spryless na leaflets na gitanom daw. Ang ebidensya na gitanom dito sa piloke sa yahang iksuon. Okay. So, early in the morning of October 6, it was transported to Monjic Prison Fortress. In the afternoon, he was brought to this pohol who told him that there was an order to ship him back to Manila in the evening. So, di ba, kasad. He was then taken on board the ship, ship Colon. Hmm? which he left for Manila at 8 p.m. So, di ba, naabot siya Europe, na prisoner siya, balik na po din siya, oh, Manila. And then his ship was full of Spanish soldiers and their families who were under orders not to go near or talk to Rizal. Though he was allowed to take walks on that during the journey, he was locked up and handcuffed before reaching any port that is... Saman, may yung tagmers or luoy? <laughs> okay. So, last homecoming. Arriving in Manila as a prisoner on November 3, 1896. Rizal was detained in Fort Santiago where he had been imprisoned four years ago. That's before siya na-deport. Remember? So, to gather pieces of evidence against him, some of his friends, acquaintances, members of the Liga, and even his brother Pasano were tortured and forcibly questioned. As a preliminary investigation result underwent a series of inter interrogation admi administered by one of the judges, Colonel Francisco Olive. Okay. The same military leader who led the troops that forced the Rizal family to vacate their Kalamba home in 1890. Oh, diba? ang mga Spanish officials niya, no? Those who were coerced to testify against Rizal were not allowed to be cross-examined by the accused. Kung lang tao ni mo, di ba, kung sa trial pa ni na legit na trial, kay di ba, duha man na ang, sa itawag ani, ang defense lawyer sa katong accused and the lawyer of the, sa itawag ani, kanang citizens of the Philippines, di ba, anak man pag ang sala sa isa ka tao kay dili against a specific na tao but against sa whole country daw. But so much for that. It is not ang nahitabo na trial jud sa kanina time is a very one-sided na trial. So, okay. But again, whatever oh, testify against result will not allowed to be cross-examined by the accused or the defense lawyer of the accused it is napagyod it is also a an issue kasi yung naging defense lawyer ni Rizal was not by his own choice or choice niya pero gitaga na siya listahan sa tanang Spanish officials na pwede mahimong defense lawyer niya so okay Rizal is said to have admitted knowing most of those questions. Hmm? Admit daw siya sa mga questions sa iya, ha? Except, never daw siya ni-admit na kaila siya or na na kaila siya kay Andres Bonifacio o Pilinario Mabini. Okay. 15 pieces of documentary evidences were presented against Rizal. Hmm? 
hmm? 15 pieces of documentary, meaning written evidences. Here, this is letters, rest, or letters of his compatriots, meaning itong mga kauban niya na propagandist and mga friends niya. Here in the, um, he is same sa tagadiri, or like, friends niya na tagadiri sa Pilipinas at katong tagagawas. And then, napa? Itong mga letters niya kay Marcelo H. Del Pilar, Antonio Luna, katong sa Triumvirate, sa Propaganda, and then iyang poem na Kundiman, then Masonic na document, to transcripts of speech of the Katiponeros, excuse me, sorry, transcript of um, speeches, meaning it is parang uh, written ba na kanang copy of a speech which says daw na Rizal is a very important part or very important name in the independence movement. So, after that, the poem na Atalisay, then testimonial evidence involved. Oh, after the documentary evidence, then testimonial that's involved, the oral testimonies of 13 Filipinos Notably, including the La Liga officers, diba? like Ambrosio Salvador and Diodato Arellano and Pio Valenzuela, kani ang pinaka, pinaka controversial. Because sa lahat ng malaking officials, malalaking officials in Katipunan, um, Pio Valenzuela was the one to leave longest after the death of Rizal and he was still able to contest iha mga gistorya before he was um, able to um, to anong tawag nito to say um, contrary or to say things na contrary sa iha mga gipang storya before so you need to research about that personally about P. Valenzuela kay taas taas pa kay na siya story because he is one of the tor the torture daw to get evidences against Rizal and he had given informations about the KKK about kay Rizal na taliwas daw sa tinuod kay nga nang ingon mo taliwas sa tinuod kay iya mang giusab after some years na namatay na si Rizal so mhm mm so, controversial yun kay ni si Pio Valenzuela, actually. Okay. So, that's the testimonial evidences. Then, Olive submitted the reports to Blanco. Blanco, again, the Governor General during this time. On November 26, Captain Rafael Dominguez was signed as special judge advocate in Rizal's case. Dominguez, Rafael Dominguez became the judge. Apa, Dominguez made summary of the case and delivered to Blanco, who subsequently sent the papers to Judge Advocate General Don mm, Nicolas de la Peña. After examining the case, Peña recommended the result be instantly brought to trial. He must be kept in jail. An order of attachment be issued against his properties. A Spanish army officer, not a civilian, be permitted to defend him in court. Diba? Tungod atong mga nag-gather na evidence. Mga evidence na preliminary gi, gi present against kay Rizal. Muna ito hinungdan. Nga nung nahitabo niya ang upat. On December 8, Rizal was given the restricted right to choose his lawyer from a list of 100 Spanish officers. He chose Lieutenant Luis Tabel de Andrade who turned out to be the younger brother of his bra um, bodyguard in Calamba, Jose Taviel de Andrade. Three days after December, oh, December 11, the former charges were read to Rizal in prison cell with Andrade on his side. In short, he was accused of being the main organizer and the living soul of the revolution. Having proliferated ideas of revol revolution and founding illegal organizations, ito. Diba? Um, one of the reasons, baya, or one of the documentary evidence, diba, is a transcript of 
a speech of katipuneros saying na Rizal is yung parang ginagamit na name in encouraging and in recruiting in the katipunan and then diba napabaya din rin na while Rizal said yes na tinuod ang mga gipang pangutana sa iya hanap din sa church na na siya na kanang gusto siya na mahimong na changes na mahitabo in the government diba ni pero niingon di siya na wala siya ka ila kay Bonifacio ug Aguinaldo so weird kay no niingon siya og wala siya ka ila kay Bonifacio ug Aguinaldo pero he was accused of being the main organizer and the living soul of the revolution so usi meaning ana ma'am so tinuod jud di ay nagigamit ang name ni Rizal in the KKK na organization inside the KKK to boost the morale sa mga Filipino members without the consent of Rizal because again, while he was in the Pitan, he didn't give his consent baya to start an active na armed revolution, di ba? He said no baya. Muto na niya na pagani siya na. He asked for support. And here comes Dayon na bahala giingon siya o dili. Higamit siya po na yung alan. So, this actually quite sad para kay Rizal na nabu- ang nahitabo ano na na trial. So, he pleaded not guilty to the crime of rebellion. Excuse me. And explained that La Liga, the constitution of which he wrote, was just a civic organization. La Liga, remember, this is a three days na organization. That is the upshot, di ba, the, the branch of the propaganda movement in the Philippines. Kung ang propaganda movement kay nag-headquarters um, in Spain, si La Liga is in the Philippines supposedly. Di ba? Second, um, before na himong exile si Rizal, remember na naghimo niyang La Liga, but tungod sa iyang nahimo siyang exile three days after, namatay ragya punta yun ang La Liga. So, even the La Liga na 3 days ra nag-exist, gigamit again sa iya. Okay? On December 13, the day Camilo G. de Folia Beja replaced Blanco as Governor General, papers of Rizal's criminal case were sent to Malacanang. Concern about the welfare of his people, Rizal, on December 15, wrote a manifesto appealing to the revolutionaries to discontinue the uprising and pursue attain liberty instead by means of education and of labor o diba even gani na naana siya sa kanang prisuhan ni ingon pa gyud siya o diba o ni appeal na gyud siya na dili lagi ta ready for na pricing dili pa ta ready na makipatay sa ilaha so please stop we need to pursue liberty independence freedom by means of education and labor dili kay mamatay mo para sa wala diba Okay, so on December 26 morning, the Filipino puppet who was once figuratively referred to by Spanish officials as a trap trap appeared in the conqueror court. So, nahitabo ang iyahang trial on hmm, December 26. Mawaging gitawag ni na um, the rat, the trial of the rat in the conqueror court. If I'm not mistaken, or the rat trial in the kangaroo court. The kangaroo meaning the Spanish court. And then, rat tra daw si Rizal. So, murag wala pala siya nitindog sa trial, pili di na siya daan. So, he was tried before seven members of the military court. Lieutenant Colonel Jose Togoros Arjona as the president of the seven. So, Judge Advocate Dominguez presented Rizal's criminal case followed by the lengthy speech of prosecuting attorney Enrique de Alcocer to appeal to the emotions of the Spanish judges. Alcocer went by uh, went as far as dramatically mentioning the Spanish soldiers who had died in the Filipino Tritorius revolt and discriminately describing Rizal as a typical oriental. Typical oriental meaning ang katong mga walang utang na loob in the noble na kanang visions and plano ni Spain para kay Philippines. 
Hmm? Results Defense Council, Lieutenant Andrade, Dayo, ni try, ni try, try this best to respond or really he tried his best to defend Rizal but but he really failed even though you know, you know, Rizal was also allowed to read his complementary defense consisting of logical proofs that he could not have taken part in the revolution of the La Liga was distinct from Katipunan he argued among others that he even advised Katipunan and Misahari de Valenzuela in the pita not to pursue with the plans of revolt the revolutionists had used his name without his knowledge kani bahalag ni Ingo na si Rizal na dili lagi wala lagi ko ilabot napagyod he also pointed out na he could have escaped in the Pitan or Singapore but he did not he didn't man siya guilty lagi daw also the civic group La Liga which he died out upon uh, which died out upon his exile again here katong nawala tungkol kaya na exile siya did not dis, um did not serve the purpose of the uprising. He had no knowledge about its reformation. But still, but still, atong gi declare na na trial is over. Respectively, the entire defense was indifferently discarded. Results mock here. They totally disregarded whatever ang represent ni Rizal and unanimously. Dr. Jose Rizal was found guilty and sentenced to death by firing squad on December 28th. Oh. December 28th, Governor General Folia Veja signed the court decision and declared the guilty be executed by firing squad at 7 a.m. on December 30th, 1896. Here, remember, on Sanam. Mm, on para maday ng title daw yun paano ko o ganun na okay so the rat in the kangaroo court o diba December 26 nagsugod ang inyahang trial natiramahan ang final na verdict December 28 patyo na lang siya December 30 so after his trial that's the last 25 hours ni Rizal so nakasunod na mo Ikap tagamay, gikan sa iyahang second um, hmm? second coming, second coming, sa so, na Christ, iyahang second homecoming, niuli siya sa Pilipinas, again, tungod ato iyahang plano na maghimo og refuge, and then, pag uli niya sa Pilipinas, iyahang gi, hmm? iyahang gi, build an Laliga Filipina, but three days after, tungod kay na arrest siya and then exile siya na matay sa Japan. But yes, and then after that na na arrest siya, dapita na dayon. Every day niya na life sa dapita, yahang yahang achievements, yahang pagka scientist, ang kato mga Jesuit priors, ang yahang mga spies, ang kato mga nad Niya to siya ha ng mga emissaries and then visited by iyang mama, tulo ka isong babae, isa ka igso, uh, isa ka babae na pag-umangkon, then tulo ka lalaki na pag-umangkon. Then iya ha yung pag-goodbye sa Dapitan, plano niya na mag to Cuba, from Dapitan to Manila, and then Manila to Spain, and then igora nag stop over to dito sa Spain, Spain back to Manila, and then from Manila, dito na din siya na, dipriso na din siya bagumbayan. Then, iyahan na da yung trial. And then, after sa iyahang trial in the kangaroo court, that's on December 28, the final na verdict na patio na siya in December 30, 1896. So, after na, iyahan na yung last 24 hours. But, let's cut the discussions here. And, uh, we'll have a 15 minutes na question and answer portion. So, yes, after the 15 minutes na question and answer portion, we'll go na dayon sa results last 24 hours, results death, and then, yaha yung retraction. Okay.